Many times, brothers, have you wasted your time between the Azan and the Iqama when you could have been making dua and your dua would not have been rejected. You claim you want a nice sister in marriage. You sisters claim you want a tall, dark, handsome man. You could be making dua between Azan and Iqama and Allah will answer your dua. How many times have we wasted time? How many masjids call the Iqama immediately after the Azan, disobeying Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not giving the people time to do that? Hmm? And don't point any fingers, brothers and sisters, please. Don't point any fingers at any masjid. We know who, 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 does, who do these things. Also, one of the times that dua is accepted is when it is raining. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, اُطْلُبُ استجابة دعائي عند التقاء الجيوش وإقامة الصلاة ونزول الغيب Seek the answer for your dua, and I'm saying in three times, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you meet the enemy in jihad, that's number one. When the iqama for the salah, or when the salah is established, that's number two. And when it's raining, and it doesn't make any difference if it's drizzling or it's torrential rain. When it rains, your dua is accepted. It's answered by Allah. You're driving down the street and it starts pouring down raining. You're in your car. But don't take your hands off the steering wheel now. Just make dua. Inshallah, Allah will answer your dua. Also, and I don't know if you have this here, but where I come from, you hear a lot of roosters. A lot of roosters making the cock a doodle doo sound. I guess you children, you woke up now, right? You, you heard that? You heard? You know what that is? What, what makes that sound? Hmm? What kind of animal does that? A chicken? You're from Pittsburgh, you're not from the country, that's what, that's what it is, a chicken? No, it's a rooster. When the rooster crows, the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ سِيَاحَ الدِّيَةِ فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَإِنَّهَا رَأَتْ مَلَكَةٍ He said, when the rooster makes that sound, you should ask Allah for his fadl, for his bounty, because surely that rooster has seen an angel. Surely that animal has seen an angel. وَإِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ نَهِيقَ الْحِمَارِ فَتَعَوَّذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهَا رَأَتْ شَيْطَانًا And when you hear the braying of a donkey, which is the worst sound to Allah, Allah says in the Quran, it's the worst sound to Allah. أَنْكَرَ الْأَصْوَاتِ سَوْتُ الْحِمَارِ the worst sound to Allah is the sound of the donkey. When you hear that, then you should seek refuge with Allah from a shaitan. And in another narration it says, when you hear a dog barking, you should seek refuge with Allah from a shaitan, for surely that donkey or that dog in another narration has seen a shaitan. And what does that tell you, brothers and sisters? That tells you that at least these, two, these three animals are able to see things that are hidden from our view. That tells you that these three animals at least are able to see some of the things that are hidden from our view. As for the person whose dua is accepted, I feel like I'm going over the time. Am I going over the time? No, I don't have three hours. No, no. We're going to stop here, inshallah. As for the people whose dua is accepted, the first category, and not necessarily in this order, is الذاكرون الله كثيرا والإمام العادل The person who makes zikr a lot. The person who remembers Allah a lot. The person who says, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Subhanallah al-Azim. Those who read the Quran a lot. Because this is the best type of zikr. 
Those people who do this, their dua is accepted by Allah. It's answered by Allah and also the just Imam. The just, honest Imam. His dua is accepted as the Prophet Sallallahu said, ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا يَرُضُّ اللَّهُ دُعَاءَهُمْ أَذَّاكِرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالْمَظْلُومُ وَالْإِمَامُ الْمُقْسِطُ The three people, Allah never rejects their dua. The first person is the person who remembers Allah much. And brothers and sisters in Islam, Imam al-Shafi'i, if my memory serves me correctly, he has mentioned to show you the wisdom, how the ulama, how the scholars of Islam used to think. He said, based on a verse in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and lying on their sides, He says, it is important for the Muslim that they should make zikr to Allah standing, sitting, and lying on their sides. How many times have you made zikr and you sat down and you were standing up already? You say, Subhanallah, 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 but you sit down to do it. Allah mentions in the Quran, firstly, those who stand. So that shows us some superiority to sitting, because Allah mentioned it first. And then those who sit, and then those who are lying on their side. That person who remembers Allah much, their dua is going to be answered by Allah. The second category of person is the mazloom. Mazloom, the person who is oppressed. You brothers who have your wives in a situation, those of you who have more than one wife, you have your other wives in a situation where they're either not divorced nor married, where you have them hanging, you haven't divorced them, or nor do you visit them, you stay away from them. This woman is oppressed. And if you keep mistreating her like this, if she made a dua against you, her dua is going to be accepted. The brother who you went into a, a business contract with, and you wrongfully took his money and didn't complete that roof or complete that car job, you are oppressing that brother. If he makes dua against you, his dua will be accepted. That's about Allah. You better be careful. The dua of the oppressed is answered. And the last category, al imam al The just imam. The imam who is a good imam. He's a fair imam. He doesn't lean to the right or lean to the left because you're Pakistani or because you're Afro-American. He's a just, fair imam. His dua is accepted and answered by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, because I don't want to burden the people because it's very late, the person whose, answer, whose dua is going to be answered is the person who makes the dua of the Prophet Yunus, alayhi salatu wassalam. From Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, who said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in conclusion said, Da'watu zinnuni idda'a biha wa huwa fi batn al لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين لم يدع بها رجل مسلم في شيء قط إلا استجاب الله له. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم says the dua of Zunun Yunus عليه الصلاة والسلام who was in the belly of the whale. When he made the dua alayhi salam, there is nothing worthy of worship as a deity except you. You are far above imperfections and defects, O Allah, glory be to you. And I am of those who transgress the bounds and wrong himself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever makes that dua, la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al no one makes that dua of the Prophet Yunus. No Muslim, male or female, black or white, 
Arab or non-Arab, makes dua for themselves after making the dua of Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu salam, except that Allah will answer his dua. Except that Allah will answer his dua. This is very, very important, brothers and sisters. If we knew the that if we really understood the value of this statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we would be attaching the du'a of Yunus alayhi salatu salam to everything that we do. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. It's a simple formula. This thing, this du'a is so light on your tongue. It will take you just less than an hour to learn how to say this. Even if you don't know anything about the Arabic language, it's very easy to learn this du'a. If you say this du'a and then you make du'a for yourself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your du'a. So brothers and sisters in Islam, inshaAllah, this is just some of the things that we'd like to share with you of how we can purify our souls and our hearts and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the ways we can do it is by implementing these du'a. It's implementing the zikr and the du'a that has been left for us from our great Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we really want to strive to sanctify and purify ourselves, then we need to implement and execute and utilize these different du'as and zikrs so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer our du'a and that perhaps insha'Allah we'll be forgiven for our sins and Allah will have mercy on us and he'll admit us into his jannah and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for myself and for you because one of the other people that we didn't mention whose dua is answered is the person who's traveling. The dua of the traveler is answered. So I now raise my hands. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntum min al O Allah, I ask you for Jannah and I ask you to admit those who listen to my voice in the Jannah. Amin. O Allah, I ask you for the Jannah and I ask you for those who are listening to my voice, give them the Jannah. Ameen. O oh Allah, I ask you for the Jannah and I ask those who listen to my voice to admit them into the Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een which is also part of the etiquette of dua that your dua goes up and it's suspended between heavens and earth until you say Dua for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So remember to attach that also to your dua. Subhanak Allah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Anything that I have said that is, in, that is correct is from Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. And anything that I have said that is incorrect, it is from as shaytan or myself. And the end of our da'wah is an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Um, we've all, we all have a big day tomorrow. For Brother Dawood and myself and all the brothers who are going to the conference, inshallah. I hope that inshallah this is the tip of the iceberg. And for you brothers, I hope that everyone is inspired, inshallah, who wasn't going to come to come. Um, so we're going to allow a short amount of time, just a short amount of time, because the brother has to get some sleep and we have to get some sleep. Um, but it also, one note, it's from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, so from to delay the Isha prayer. And a lot of times brothers sometimes have a problem with somebody pushing the prayer back. If it's Aisha, the Prophet so some like to delay the Isha even sometimes until half the night. So inshallah with this we're going to take some questions. Are these from the sisters? Okay, we have some questions from the sisters, then we'll take some questions from the brothers for a short amount of time inshallah. Uh, there's a series of questions here and I don't want to be disrespectful, disrespectful but I would prefer to uh, to forego the questions that don't revolve around the topic. There are some questions here, the first one on top deals with pictures and videos and things like that. I'd like to leave this on the side inshallah, and if they're not dealing with the subject of purification of the soul by way of dua and or zikr, then inshallah we can deal with this um, later inshallah. Then, and we have open forum also tomorrow inshallah. Uh, also the next question is uh, not pertaining to the topic and the next question is also not pertaining to the topic now here's one what type of dua do you make when, ex when you're expecting or wanting to have a baby well I've never been pregnant 
but I do know a few people that have been pregnant. And they've asked me the question also, what dua do you make when you're expecting or wanting to have a baby? <clears throat> There's no specific dua to the best of my knowledge that you say, ah, oh, yes it is. Yes it is. Yes. If someone has a Quran, a copy of the Quran, you can look, I think it's in Surah Ali Imran or Surah Maryam, I think. Uh, just a minute, I can give you the verse, insha'Allah, if you just be patient. Insha'Allah, I think it's Surah Maryam. Or Ali Imran, maybe Ali Imran. Oh, let's check Maryam, insha'Allah. Anyone here, half of the Quran? No half of the Quran here? Shame on you. Shame on you. You shouldn't have one half of the Quran. Uh, yes. I think it's here in Surah Maryam where Well, I don't see it, but there is a verse in the Qur'an where the mother of Maryam It's an Ali Imran. I tell you it's Ali Imran. The, the mother of Maryam made a vow that she would uh, give her child in service to Allah, to the temple. To the temple. The scholars of Islam uh, say that it's permissible to take statements like this and add or subtract words to the ayah itself. You're not changing the verse. You're just taking the dua itself and saying, for instance, Oh Allah, if it is a boy, I want to offer my child, this boy child, in jihad. Or, Oh Allah, if it's a girl, I want, oh Allah, make her a, a righteous woman, uh, memorizing the Quran, memorizing Bukhari and Muslim, and uh, whatever. It's permissible to do this when you're pregnant. As for those who are wanting to have a child, the dua also in Surah Maryam, where Zachariah, he said, وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي عَاقِرًا فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيًّا He said, I fear that I will not have a successor after me because my wife is barren. So, O oh Allah, give me from yourself a successor, a wali. This dua, uh, like the other uh, verse of Quran, can be altered in a manner that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the child without saying your wife is barren. I made this dua. My wife of almost 17 years, the first 10 years of our marriage. The month of Shawwal, the month after Ramadan, we've been married, inshallah, 17 years, alhamdulillah. And for 10 of those 17 years, we didn't have a child. We didn't have a child. And we were doing everything that we could do to have a child. Going to the house, everything. And I started implementing this dua, of course also drinking zamzam, using black seed, making, trying to remember those times that dua accepted, and the places that dua accepted. And finally, alhamdulillah, I have a daughter. Sometimes I wish she would go back where she came from, <laughs> but alhamdulillah I have a daughter. Alhamdulillah. Uh, this question is not pertaining to the dua either. Uh, this question is not pertaining to dua. Before you conclude your discussion, uh, can you recap one, two, three, when dua is accepted? And also show us again how you put your hand. Right. How you position your hand. Uh, I don't remember what the one, two, three, one, two, what they meant by the one, two, three.
<laughs> is that is that what's mentioned by this this note? But I think I think this person, I think this is the sisters, right? I think they mean something else. They said one, two, three. I don't remember I don't know exactly what they're talking about. Um, but inshallah maybe we can No, but there were quite a, there were quite a few of one, two, threes there. So I don't remember exactly what it was. But as far as how you put your hands, uh, I put my hands like you see these little figurines, the the praying hands excuse me, the praying hands figurines that the Christians have. And like the Hindus, they pray like this, and the Sikhs, the Sikhs also pray like this. This is not from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Sunnah was to raise his hands with his arms raised and his palms facing upward. Oh, by the way, there's an unauthentic hadith that says put your hands downward with the palms facing downward. It's an unauthentic hadith. Don't utilize that hadith. It's not authentic. Yeah. I'm sorry I even said it. Maybe some people may try to just start doing it. Huh? And that's all the questions from the sisters. There's no more questions pertaining to uh, the topic. We'll save these for tomorrow, inshallah. And, um, and maybe we can deal with them. If there are any from the brothers, inshallah, about purification of the soul by way of du'a. No. Not the best du'a. The du'a, the sunnah, is to make du'a before tasni. Yes. Hmm. No. The question is for the sisters or the brothers who can't hear. Are you permitted to delay your taslim if you're following the imam so that you can make dua? The answer is no. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith transmitted by al-Bukhari and others, he said, الإمام جعل الإمام ليتم به فلا تختلف عليه And the statement فلا تختلف عليه is in the Musnad ibn Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Uh, he says, the Imams are appointed to be followed, so don't contradict or oppose them. The Imams are appointed to be followed, so don't contradict or oppose them. You have to do what they do. So if the Imam says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and to the left, then you have to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to the right and to the left, even if you didn't finish your dua. Sure. Um. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yeah. 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 Uh, the brother's asking for a dua that's a short and sweet that we can say quickly uh, uh, tonight and that short and sweet dua is Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah اللهم إني أسألك الجنة Oh Allah, I ask you for Jannah. اللهم إني أسألك الجنة اللهم إني أسألك الجنة اللهم إني أسألك الجنة That's pretty easy, right? May Allah give it to us. Amen. No. There is a dua, the brother's asking the question, is there any dua that we can say when going into jihad, and he mentioned that the jihad is not just confronting the, um, um, the human being, but it's also confronting the jinn. And this may sound silly to some people, 
But Allah mentions it in the Quran that we have shayateen, shaitan from among the jinn and the men. And the Prophet also has mentioned this sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In fact, he said that there are some people who have the bodies of human beings and the hearts of shaitan. The Prophet of, this, the Prophet of Islam mentioned this sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is one dua um, <coughs> that we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, that is mentioned in the Quran, which is, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ That's one. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Also we have, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعِ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Which you add, السَّمِيعِ and الْعَلِيمِ Which are two of the names of Allah, the hearer, the knower. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعِ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And this is something that we should say when we open up the Qur'an. And also we have, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعِ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ مِنْ هَمْزِهِ وَنَفْخِهِ وَنَفْسِهِ O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you, uh, the, the Allah, the hearer, the, the, hearer, the, the, the knower, from a shaitan, the, the rejected, from his hem, his nafkh, and his nafkh. His hem, his nafkh, and his nafkh. His blowing, his poetry, and his pumping up with pride. And Allah knows best. We also have a dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when there was uh, any fear of a people, that he used to say, Allahumma inna naj'aluka fi nuhurihim wa na'udhu bika min shururihim. Oh Allah, I put you in their necks. I put you, Allah, in their necks. Doesn't mean you put Allah in the person's neck. It means you put the fear of Allah. Oh Allah, I put the fear of you in their throat. Right? And I seek, we seek refuge with you from their evil. We seek refuge of you from their evil. And also there's a dua that we say we, when we enter into any, any type of new home or a new apartment or a hotel room or anything like that, we say, أعوذ بكلمات الله تامة من شر ما خلق. أعوذ بكلمات, الت... أعوذ بكلمات الله تامة من شر ما خلق. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil of that which he created. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says this when they go into a room, and this also can be used for other things, that uh, nothing will harm him in, when he, until he returns home. So there are many dua for seeking refuge uh, against a shaitan from among the human beings in jihad and also the jinn. Uh, as for specific jihad fighting, we can make the dua that Prophet Dawood made ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين. O oh Allah, pour down on us patience and make our feet firm and give us victory over the disbelieving people. Right? And I'd just like to make a side note to that, that if you don't purify your heart, then your feet will never be firm. If you don't purify your heart, <laughs> and make your heart firm, then your feet are going to run. Your feet are going to run, they're going to move, they're going to be shakable. But if you make that heart firm in the deen and obedience of Allah, then those feet will never move. I don't care who's in front of you. Allah support. Now. You talking about dua or salah? <laughs> okay, the brother's asking the question and I'm kind of confused. It's not the brother who's confusing me, it's just me understanding it. The brother is asking, uh, does the dua and or the salah have to be in the Arabic language? Is that what you're asking me? But you're asking me specifically about dua. It's better, of course, to make the dua in the language that the dua was revealed in, which is the Arabic language. 
it's better for, for a couple of reasons. One of the main reasons why it's better to learn how to make these dua in Arabic is because the richness of the Arabic language it is so rich and the, and the meanings of the words are so rich you can never express it in the English language. Even as rich as Urdu is and Persian. I think Persian is more richer than Urdu, the language of the Iranians, Persian, Farsi.